Morning Shedders. Today I've got my coffee and I think we'll talk about BSA single cylinder pumps. Here's one I bought off eBay for about I think it was £8.50 which is a bargain because they're normally a lot more than that. Unfortunately it doesn't have the spindle on it but I'm sure we can get a hold of that. It was absolutely seized when I got it even though it said I think on the advert it said it was um, uh, stiff to turn but there's no way you were turning that. So as um, a bit of an experiment I chucked it into the um, ultrasonic cleaner about an hour highest temperature um, and it freed up which is good but I think we still need to sort of strip it down and just have a look inside it give it a little bit of uh, 3 one oil just to get it lubricated and but I think we'll talk about these uh, pumps um, <clears throat> give you an idea about how they work and um, how to identify which ones you've got so all the BSA single pumps are double geared and I'll show you the inside of one in a bit. And one set of gears does the pumping and the other set of gears which is a larger set and uh, does the scavenging and um, pumps are screwed to the inside of the timing side of the crankcase and there are three types of pumps for uh, BSA signals have the early C15 B40 pump which is a, a horizontal type pump which has a scavenger tube on and they were issued up until 1966 and they're fitted to the ones which have a plain side um, Bosch um, the later ones are of vertical pumps and this is a vertical pump um, there's three types the, yeah there's three types of vertical pumps always make sure that you use the correct sump filter for whichever pump that you're using okay so the first pump uh, the first vertical pump was a um, a zinc alloy pump with an aluminium top um, these were didn't last very long and then um, they brought out an oil an all zinc alloy pump with the top and the, uh, the casing the body all zinc alloy and then um, the third type is the cast iron pump which they came out with later the reason why they changed from a zinc alloy pump to a cast iron pump was two reasons one um, the heat of the engine was causing the zinc alloy bodies and top to to warp and the vibration of the engine was causing the zinc alloy to crack and that's why they moved to a cast iron pump uh, later on now um, the way that you recognize a cast iron pump as opposed to a zinc alloy pump is uh, the spindle is longer and also it has a third hole sort of uh, you see where these two uh, holes are it has another hole on the side of the uh, the neck um, so you can tell it's a three point point three point mounting and that's a zinc alloy pump you can actually fit a cast sorry that it was three point it's a cast iron pump you can actually fit a cast iron pump into uh, a um, a crankcase that is um, made for a, a zinc alloy pump but it needs quite a bit of modification uh, if you wondering about doing that modification it is actually listed in Rupert Ratio's um, unit single manual volume one the engine and I would recommend getting hold of one of those books I've got one here They're quite expensive but um, has all sorts of uh, great information including how to make the modifications to fit a cast iron pump into a position where a zinc alloy pump used to be Okay, now uh, feed gears inside um, they had different feed gears and they had um, small type which was the early one um, 
then they had that was fitted to a bit early B44s then a V-type gears which um, fits to most engines with uh, roller bearing big ends S-type gears fits to B25S and V and S-type gears fits to the cast iron pumps and the way you identify this is I don't think you can see it on here uh, on the later pumps uh, it's on the actual body itself it's engraved at the body it also has a date of manufacturing the body as well on the earlier pumps like this one um, it's actually on the um, top body and hopefully you probably won't be able to see this uh, this mirror image of this um, this um, is just just there hopefully you can see an S there so this is an early type of pump now <clears throat> I was going to use this pump for the um, B25 but I don't know if we can get away with it or not because um, obviously they have a on the list, they have uh, an S type gear. So, what's inside one of these? Right, I'm, I'm going to. One of the things I was going to do with this pump was, I was going to lubricate it because it's been in the ultrasonic cleaner and there's a bit of degrease and all sorts in there. Um, so, I'm going to put a bit of 3 1 oil in there. So it separates by four screws. If you've got an ultrasonic cleaner, um, stick it in there first because the vibration will uh, free off some of these screws. That'll probably be um, not undone for a very, very long time. So these screws go all the way through the body and connect to the top plate. So once you've unscrewed these screws, it all sort of comes apart. So we'll just take the base plate off first. And that's what's inside one. Okay. That's on one side. And if I just free the top off, you can see just about a similar sort of arrangement in the top. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a three, bit of three in one oil <coughs> to the gear housings just to lubricate it. Down. There you go, you can actually see it spinning as you spin the um, the rod at the top. Again, level dosing of oil. Obviously it'll leak out a bit, but I just want to put a bit of um, a bit of lubricant in there. Let's put it all back together again. <coughs> now if you get a pump which is, is seized. Now the best thing to do really is to get an old sort of cleaner, stick it in there and get the pump hot. Now if if it um, probably if you find it it freeze while hot, well you you're onto a winner there usually and it's just a case of um, getting it lubricated, open it up See if there's any bits of smeg or whatever that you need to remove, and um, leave it up, oil it up, and see if it spins. Now, there are ways of repairing these because you can have um, the gear rods, little gear rods, mainly reaming out 
do that. You can have uh, high spots on the casing. Uh, we can uh, remove. And you can also have the, the top or the bottom plates which are worn, which are warped, and you can lap them um, to flatten them off again. Or you could just go out and buy a brand new cast iron one and do the modifications in, in Rupert's book. But they are quite expensive. I think they're about £200 I think. So there we go. So what I'm going to do with this, this pump now is I'm going to um, ask on the internet, see what um, what whether we can get away with using it on the B25. If we can, great, stick it onto the into the engine. Otherwise, if we can't use it, I'll just stick it on eBay. Um, obviously, when you look inside these things, check for things like chipped gears, broken gears, um, scoring on the pump body where the gear rubs against them. And when you put them back together again, don't use assembly goo just um, a bit of oil that should give you the seal and um, yeah hope that's helped for everybody and any questions just drop us a, um, a comment I'll put the link in for Rupert's book as well so if you want to buy that um, like I say it's great quite expensive at £30 but it's well worth the money uh, mine's even signed you might even get him to sign it for you and um yeah like subscribe all that kind of stuff that i always forget to put on the end of these things and um i'm gonna crack on to do something else in the shed now so see you later guys <laughs>